again. It's a red stick. The one who knows the secret does not speak. The one who speaks does not know the secret. Alice Bailey, one of the key members of the New Age religion, wrote. There is no question therefore that the work to be done in familiarizing the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. These mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the church and the Maconic fraternity. The question of just what the ancient mysteries were was answered, in part, by Albert G. Mackey, another 33rd degree Macon, in his two-volume work entitled Encyclopedia of Flea Maconry. He wrote this under the subject of the ancient mysteries. Each of the pagan gods had, besides the public and open, a secret worship paid to him to which none were admitted, but those who had been selected by preparatory ceremonies called initiation. This secret worship was termed the mysteries. The student of the Maconic Order can know that when Mr. Mackey writes, his writings can be relied upon. He is considered to be one of the premier Maconic authors of all time. These are the comments from the biographical information presented on Mr. Mackey in the front of his encyclopedia. His writings are universally esteemed for their sincerity, honest records and common sense. He was a leader in research who valued accuracy. Carl Claudy, another Macon who writes on the subject of the Lodge, also has words of praise for Mr. Mackey. He was one of the greatest students and most widely followed authorities the Maconic world has ever known. And in his book entitled, Introduction to Flea Maconry, he praised Mr. Mackey with these words. Albert Gallatin Mackey. One of the greatest students and most widely followed authorities the Maconic world has known. He is the great master of Flea Maconry. So Mr. Mackey can be believed when he tells his readers that the worship of pagan gods had a secret non-visible worship besides the public one. The reader can believe him when he identifies the name of this secret worship. He told his readers. This secret worship was termed the mysteries. Another who has written about the subject of the ancient mysteries was Manly P. Hall, another 33rd degree Macon. He has written in his book entitled, What the Ancient Wisdom Expects of Its Disciples. In the remote past the gods walked with men and, they chose from among the sons of men the wisest and the truest. With these specially ordained and illumined sons, they left the keys of their great wisdom, which was the knowledge of good and evil, these illumined ones, founded what we know as the ancient mysteries. He wrote additional comments about these mysteries in another of the books he has written, called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. The arcana of the ancient mysteries were never revealed to the profane, except through the media of symbols. Symbolism fulfilled the dual office of concealing the sacred truths from the uninitiated, and revealing to those qualified to understand the symbols. Mr. Hall dedicated the latter book to the proposition that concealed within the emblematic figures, allegories and rituals of the ancients is a secret doctrine concerning the inner mysteries of life, which doctrine has been preserved in toto among a small band of initiated minds since the beginning of the world. He went on to mention that the mysteries were secret societies, binding their initiates to inviolable secrecy and avenging with death the betrayal of their sacred trusts. Mr. Hall told the reader that no one is to know the identity of those who have received the secrets, he wrote. The true adept and initiate shall reveal his identity to no man, unless that one is worthy to receive it. He further explained where some of these initiates lived, when he wrote. No reasonable doubt can exist that the initiates of Greece, Egypt, and other ancient countries, possessed the correct solutions to those great cultural, intellectual, moral, and social problems, which in an unsolved state, confront the humanity of the 20th century. He further amplified that thought when he added. Neoplatonism recognized the existence of a secret and all-important doctrine, which from the time of the earliest civilizations, had been concealed within the rituals, symbols and allegories of religions and philosophies. So, in summary, it is possible to understand what these ancient mysteries were. There appear to be at least four truths gleaned from the information provided in the comments made above. Those truths appear to be. 1. The ancient mysteries had two forms of worshipping the same god. 2. The knowledge of the true God was reserved for those who had been entrusted with the secrets. 3. Those who understood those secrets were sworn to the strictest secrecy. 4. Those who had knowledge of the secrets claimed to possess all of the answers to all of the problems of mankind. There was an additional secret for the secret bearers. They had to be initiated in a private initiation ceremony. Albert Pike wrote a little about it. Initiation was considered to be a mystical death, and the perfect epoch was then said to be regenerated, newborn, restored to a renovated existence of life, light and purity. 
In fact, this new born experience is similar to the experience the born again Christians go through. The Christians call their experience a second birth, just as the Meccans do. In fact, Albert Pike calls a similar ceremony a born again experience. He wrote. In the Indian mysteries, the third degree, the initiate is said to be born again. The ceremony in the ancient mysteries has been described by the Meccanic writer Manly P. Hall. In the ancient system of initiation, the truth seeker must pass through a second birth, and those who attained this exalted state were known thereafter as the twice born. This new birth must be personally earned through a complete regeneration of character and conduct. This new birth ceremony involves a symbolic death, according to the Macon Kenneth Mackenzie. He wrote. In the ancient mysteries, the aspirant could not participate in the highest secrets until he had been placed in the coffin. In this he was symbolically set to die, and his resurrection was to the light. Modern-day Makins participate in an almost similar ceremony to the one described by these Meccanic writers. In the third degree, called the Master Makin degree, inside the Blue Lodge, the candidate is actually knocked off of his feet by several of the Makins in attendance. He is wrapped up in a blanket and moved to the western end of the temple. There, after further ceremony, he is raised up by a secret grip called the Master's Grip, or the Lion's Paw. Those who learned the mysteries also learned that they had a secret project, one that was described by Albert Pike in his book entitled, Morals and Dogma. Mr. Pike wrote. Behold our object, the end, the result, of the great speculations, of antiquity, the ultimate annihilation of evil, and restoration of man to his first estate, by a redeemer, a messiah, a Christos, the incarnate word, reason, or power of deity. Mr. Hall told his readers that those who had been initiated into the mysteries were the secret power behind the governments of the past. He wrote this about these ancient initiates in his book entitled, What the Ancient Wisdom Expects of Its Disciples. They are the invisible powers behind the thrones of earth, and men are but marionettes, dancing while the invisible ones pull the strings. We see the dancer, but the mastermind that does the work remains concealed by the cloak of silence. Other writers have confirmed the thoughts of Mr. Hall. A mechanic scholar named George Steinmetz also acknowledged that these mysteries exist, and that some of the members inside the mechanic lodges are custodians of the secrets. He has written this in his book entitled, Flea McConnery, Its Hidden Meaning. Ancient Secret Doctrine, which is concealed in McConnick allegory and symbolism. It was but to preserve these truths for future generations that McConnery was perpetuated. Another who has officially connected the ancient mysteries to the McConnick order was Manly P. Hall, who wrote this. Much of the ritualism of Flea McConnery is based on the trials to which candidates were subjected by the ancient hierophants, defined as the high priests of the mysteries, before the keys of wisdom were enthroned to them. The ancient mysteries had a beginning, according to Mr. Mackey. He wrote about where they started. The first of which are those of Isis and Osiris in Egypt. The most important of these mysteries were the Assyric in Egypt. Another writer, Edmund Renane, an ex Macon, confirmed that the Macons were involved in the worship of Osiris when he wrote this in his book entitled, The Master's Carpet. McConry ceremonies, symbols, and the celebrated legend of Hiram in the Master Macon's degree were directly borrowed from the ancient mysteries or the secret worship of Baal, Osiris or Tammuz. Albert Pike then detailed where the mysteries went after their beginnings in Egypt. He wrote this in Morals and Dogma. From Egypt, the mysteries went to Phoenicia and were celebrated at Tyre. Osiris changed his name and became Adoni or Dionysos, still the representative of the sun. In Greece and Sicily, Osiris took the name of Bacchus. So the ancient mysteries conceal an important mystery kept secret from the average person. The mystics claim that this mystery has been concealed from the world for centuries. Even though they had taken the mystery to other continents, those who believed in this religion were yet to take it to America. That was yet to come. Before I continue the video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss other useful videos. Let's continue this discussion, it's about secret society. An invisible hand is guiding the populace. Arthur Edward Waite, a prolific writer on secret societies, has written this. Beneath the broad tide of human history there flow the stealthy undercurrents of the secret societies, which frequently determine in the depths the changes that take place upon the surface. Another who wrote about the power just underneath the surface was President Woodrow Wilson, who made this startling statement. There is a power so organized, so subtle, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. So these two writers has warned America that secret societies had been arranging the major events of the past. And President Wilson warned those who were quick to condemn these organizations that they had better be cautious. Albert Pike also connected the secret societies with a secret belief in his book entitled, Morals and Dogma. He wrote that all secret orders and associations had two doctrines, one concealed and reserved for the masters, the other public. 
One such secret society with two doctrines was the Illuvernati, and Professor Weishaupt, its founder, boasted of his organization's secrecy. He realized that this secrecy would enable them to decide the fate of nations, and because their deliberations were secret, no outsider could interfere. He wrote. The great strength of our order lies in its concealment, let it never appear in its own name, but always covered by another name, and another occupation. Weishaupt later wrote about that secrecy in a letter to a fellow member of the Illuvernati. Nothing can bring this about the new world order, but hidden societies. Hidden schools of wisdom are the means which will one day free men from their bonds. Princes and nations shall vanish from the earth. So the secret societies were created to bring the world to the new society known as the new world order. The members of these organizations obviously feel that their goals are so noble that they may perform whatever tasks are required of them to bring that goal to fruition. This means that murder, plunder, and lying all become acceptable, as long as these methods assist its members in obtaining their goal. But the Makins want the world to know that they are not one of the societies involved in changing the world civilization. They are quick to rush to their own defense. Albert G. Mackey attempted to clear the air about those who had been charging them with some of these activities. He wrote in the Encyclopedia of Flea McConry. There is no charge made more frequently against Flea McConry than that of its tendency to revolution and conspiracy and to political organizations which may affect the peace of society or interfere with the rights of governments. It has been the unjust accusation of every enemy of the institution in all times past that its object and aim is the possession of power and control in the affairs of state. It is in vain that history records no instance of this unlawful connection between Flea McConry and politics, it is in vain that the libeler is directed to the ancient constitutions of the order, which expressly forbid such connections. So the public is to believe that just because their constitution forbids such activity, the Makins do not engage in it. But the evidence that connects the McConnick lodges to such activity continues to accumulate, Mr. Mackey's denials notwithstanding. This was everything inside me channel. Please share this video to everyone, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy.